welcome back to our class don't forget to subscribe if it is your first time to visit our channel uh, I just found uh, so many messages concerning about our production and uh, basically the menstrual cycle uh, that it is giving challenge uh, to students. So I uh, say that let me just design a small uh, video which is going to help you just to understand the menstrual cycle. All right, I'm going to use um, a small method called flow. This is just names of uh, the hormones which are being used in the menstrual cycle. So the menstrual cycle is divided into two, the uterine cycle and then ovarian cycle. So let's look at it uh, in detail. So what you should do, the first thing you must do if you want to understand this menstrual cycle within a, just a very short period of time, draw two lines, the first line, and then draw another line crossing. So because I'm saying that I'm using palop, so you F is polycosmic hormone, Nice hormone, estrogen, and then progesterone. So now you distribute them uh, accordingly, or uh, the way how I'm going to show you. You put uh, your the days uh, of the menstrual cycle from day zero up to day uh, 14. Some students ask me that, do we have day zero? Yes. If, if, if you are starting from, if before it makes a day, it is maybe one and a half, um, maybe six hours eh, before the full day. So day zero it ranges there before it makes a day. All right, so we are saying that you put your days 0, 7, 14, 21, and 28, then label them F is follicosmetic hormone from here, and then L is luteinizing hormone, L is this one, luteinizing hormone, and then you have O, which is osteogen, and then uh, P is uh, progesterone then it makes by taking the first layer then it makes it a uh, flop so one two three four so that's how you must uh, uh name them one two three four so it makes what what you call a flop so it means that uh, before i start it means that this hormone is going to be working in this box this hormone is going to be working in this box this hormone is going to be working in this box and then the same to this hormone. So from there, you need to know where are they uh, coming from? Where are they being produced from? So these two hormones are being produced from uh, the brain, uh, basically. Uh, the brain, which part of the brain? That is hypophysis. So if you look at the, uh, the brain, you find a hypophysis uh, in there. So sometimes you call it uh, the pituitary gland. Um, pituitary gland. So then what about these ones? These ones are being uh, produced from the ovary, where exactly osteogen is being produced from graphene follicle, while progesterone is being produced from uh, corpus ileum. Yeah. Then from there, you need to know uh, that okay, I've divided this. This one is is ovarian cycle. Then it means that ovarian cycle is being controlled by two kinds of hormone. So all this is ovarian cycle. Above the the this line, above this line. It becomes the ovarian cycle. It means that ovarian cycle is being controlled by two hormones. That is polycosmetic hormone and luteinizing hormone. So if they ask you any questions concerning about ovarian cycle, I don't expect you to talk about these two hormones. Then I then it means that this one is the uterine cycle. The ovarian cycle occurs in the ovary, while the uterine cycle occurs in the uterus. So then the cycle comes from the what is where is happening from. Yes. So uh, from there, you know that where they are produced from. Let's look at the function of each so that you now we can see exactly what is happening. So we know that follicosmetic hormone from its name, follicosmetic hormone, the hormone which stimulates the graphene follicle. Yes, so this one stimulates the, the graphene follicle to produce, uh, this hormone stimulates the development of the graphene uh, follicle. And then you have a uh, luteinizing hormone. This one uh, triggers ovulation. When you talk about trigger, it means that when you touch a trigger of the gun, the bullet comes out. So this one triggers ovulation. The, our bullet in this case is the ovum. So the moment it triggers the ovulation, then the, uh, the, the ovum is being released. It doesn't stop there. Now, when the ovum has been released, 
that sack where the ovum was it is it's now an empty graphene follicle before it was a graphene follicle but now it is an empty graphene follicle so it stimulates the conversion of the empty graphene follicle to corpus uh, loria so then what about osteogen this one prepares the uterus uh, for implantation but how does it make it prepared it makes the uh, the uterus a uh, thick a uh, vascular and then granular like more thick like a sponge vascular with many blood vessels and then granular with more glands yes so the glands try to develop you have um progesterone progesterone is very important in maintaining the pregnancy how does it maintain pregnancy by making the endometrium walls more thicker more vascular and more granular you want to see the word more it is already uh thick it is already thick but makes it more thicker it's already uh, vascular but more vascular then it's already granular and then it makes it more granular so so it means that uh, it just makes it uh, it's like maintaining like the beauty uh, of the uh, the endometrium yes so from there now you need to know now how do these hormones uh, work so now we have seen that the first hormone you need to talk about is um, uh, this hormone, follicle stimulating hormone. We start with this follicle stimulating hormone. So when the follicle stimulating hormone increases, yes. So why does it increase? So when it increases, it means that it increases so that it stimulates the graphene follicle to produce the ovum. So that's why you are seeing here that. The graphene follicle, the moment it starts to increase, then the graphene follicle starts also to develop. Before it increased, the graphene follicle was almost the same. So now the graphene follicle starts to increase. Why? Because the follicle stimulating hormone has been increased. When it increases, then it stimulates the development of the graphene follicle. So now, remember, we said that the graphene follicle is very important. So what is the function of the graphene follicle? Yes, the, the, the ovum is there developing, but does not stop there. So what is happening? So the graphene follicle, yes, when the graphene follicle uh, uh, develops, so the graphene follicle, what it does, the graphene follicle um, produces osteogen. So you see that here, osteogen has been produced. Now the osteogen has started increasing, but it does not increase unless this one has increased why because this one once it increases yes yeah it, it causes the development of the graphene follicle the graphene follicle will start to produce osteogen so what's the function of osteogen now osteogen is going to start developing the uh the endometrium wall so now the endometrium wall starts to uh develop it starts to develop uh, the uterus so it starts to make the uterus uh, thick, vascular, and granular. So before it was like this, but now it's increasing because osteogen has uh, started increasing. So now, once it is now ready, it's ready now. By this time, it's ready. Um, it means that it is ready to receive a baby or to receive um, a zygote. Now, because it is ready, on day 14, now what happens? The level, towards day 14, the level of um, Glutinizing hormone increases extremely or uh, exponentially. And on this protein, remember we said that triggers ovulation. So it has it's going to trigger ovulation. On day 14, it increases to its peak. So it means that now it's going to do these functions. The first one is going to be triggering ovulation. So now, in this case, ovulation, this uh, graphene follicle is going to burst open and then releases the ovum. So the ovum has been released on day 14. So this is the ovum. Now this one remains the empty graphene follicle. Before it was like this with the ovum. Graphene follicle, nice. But now it has released the ovum. So it has remained empty. So it has become empty graphene follicle. So now still nizing hormone is gonna trigger or is gonna stimulate the conversion of this empty graphene follicle to corpus luteum. So uh, this is gonna be changed from uh, graphene follicle, empty graphene follicle to corpus luteum by the help of um recognizing hormone so now because now its function is done so it has supposed to go down it's supposed to decrease now the moment the uh, corpus luteum has been released what happens now corpus luteum starts to produce what call uh, progesterone it produces progesterone now what's the function of progesterone 
we see that it maintains pregnancy. How? By making the endometrium more thicker, more vascular, and more granular. Now we will see that now the endometrium wall has uh, increased more blood vessels. You see them more glands. Yes. So it is now thick. It's, it's ready. Uh, if it's it's a marriage, this is the time when you are, okay, you are done with the wedding. Now you have gone to honeymoon. You are going to be looking for the baby. Now the endometrium wall will look like this. It is more thick. It's more thick. It has increased in the height. If you look at it here and here, yes, and then more vascular, more blood vessels. You can see that here the blood vessels were not that many, but here there are a lot, and then more glands. You can see that yeah. Now it can secrete uh, substances. So now when you are trying to explain, when you are trying to explain, now you start with one you start with one you go there two you go there three you go here four that's how you can uh, explain let me be brief and then i repeat it just in few seconds folicosmating hormone is being released from uh, the brain that is hypophysis this stimulates the development of the graphian follicle the graphian follicle yes produce uh, what you call oestrogen oestrogen prepares the uterus for implantation by making it thicker, vascular, and granular. Yeah, now the moment the, 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 the uterus has been prepared, now it, on day 14, on day 14, uh, ovulation occurs under the influence of luteinizing hormone. It also stimulates the conversion of the empty graphene follicle to corpus lorium. Now the moment corpus lorium is formed, corpus lorium produces progesterone. Progesterone maintains pregnancy by making it uh, making the endometrium wall more thicker more vascular and more granular uh, if realization does not take place yes so what will happen corpus lorium will degenerate yes and then the level of progesterone will drop and then this will be accompanied by bleeding or what you call the menstruation basically uh, the, that's how you can uh, explain this uh, menstrual cycle. So if they ask you the ovarian cycle only, you only talk about one and three. If you are asked uh, to, ask, to talk about the uterine cycle, you only talk about two and four. How do I identify that uh, pregnancy took place or fertilization took place or fertilization did not take place? You have three points to look at. Number one, if you see that corpus lorium has degenerated, you see it is big, it is now becomes smaller, then very small. If corpus lorium degenerates, it means that fertilization did not take place. And if corpus lorium degenerates, it means that it won't produce progesterone. It means that now the level of progesterone decreases. So if the level of progesterone decreases, then it means that fertilization did not take place. And then lastly, you look at the endometrium. If the endometrium sheds off or is, is having some uh, menstruation, then automatically it means that uh, fertilization did not take place. That's why you see that pregnant ladies or pregnant uh, people don't undergo uh, menstruation. Why? Because this endometrium is not shed, uh, is not shed off. Now, what causes this um, uh, blood uh, to come out? It just uh, look at, just take an example of a sponge. Like if you put uh, water in a sponge and then all of a sudden you squeeze the sponge, what happens? It, it erases the water which has what? Which has uh, absorbed before. So now when this uh, endometrium is being developed, it's developing, it absorbs this blood. That's why it becomes more vascular, more blood comes in. Yes, but now if the, 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 the fertilization do not take place, now the endometrium wall or the uterus starts to shrink. And once it shrinks, it, it, it squeezes this blood out and then menstruation occurs. Basically, that's how you can um, explain this process of uh, a menstrual cycle. Thank you very much for being in our class.